So I'm going to be moving my system over to a new case from Johnsbo D30, which is Micro ATX, to Johnsbo D41 Mesh. Um, same processor, Core i7, 13700K, 64GB RAM. Um, instead of Noctua, I'm going with the, the Arctic P14 PWM fans for those are going to be uh, two in the bottom as intake two at top as exhaust and the d41 although not too much larger should allow me to put an intake fan at the front which the d30 is missing it's completely closed uh, at the front um, the reason i picked this uh, mag z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard over the, for example, the Z790 Pro A is because this one, uh, they're quite similar, but this one has more USB ports and also rated, uh, the VRMs are rated uh, 90 amps or advertised rather at 90 amps versus 80 amps. Uh, looks and feels like a solid board. See, those are the USB ports I was talking about. It's got a two Type C ports in the back, 10 gig and 20 gig, and half USB 3 and uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Also has a clear CMOS button and a BIOS flash button in the back has six fan headers, so I don't have to daisy chain any fans at all. Also, as part of my trial, I bought um, two CPU coolers. One is the Noctua D15, the humongous one, and a little bit smaller one, the Phantom Spirit 120 SE from Thermal Right. This one is advertised for 280 watts, so should be more than enough to cool my 253 watt TDP Core i7 um, and I plan on using everything stock including the thermal paste that comes in the box I believe it includes the TF7 thermal paste uh, the last benchmark I ran was using Arctic MX6 and honestly didn't look anything special to me now, Thermal Rights website does not have the manual for the LGA 7800. The LGA 7800 brackets, by the way, came in the box. Two Intel backplates, LGA 7800, LGA 11 5X. And the printed manual actually has uh, directions to do the LGA 1700. Also, the other hardware clearly marked. which is good. So this is my two systems with the Core i7-13700K and both machines. Um, this one is Jonesbo D30. This one is the Jonesbo D41 Mesh. Uh, this has the Noctua D15 with a single fan. I didn't notice any difference with the single versus dual fan. This doesn't have a dedicated um, or discrete GPU. This one does. This one is using a thermal right uh, Phantom Sprit 120 SC. So I guess I laid them side by side so that you can see uh, how they look. Um, this uh, John Squo D30 is Micro ATX. It's uh, 204 by 325 by 401 millimeters. The total volume of 26.6 liters. The D41 uh, is 205 by 392 by 440 millimeters. The total volume of 35.4 liters. It is using 0.6 and 0.7 millimeter steel panels. This one is using 1.5 millimeter aluminium panels. Uh, both of them has 168 millimeter CPU cooler height clearance 
uh, this is 4.36 kilograms this is 6.78 kilograms um, this does feel a little flimsy because of the thin panel used uh, but I picked this because of the mesh panels of course and this one provides me uh, and room to add an extra 120 millimeter fan at the front and also has a little bit better cable management channels in the back. Uh, I did, however, uh, put a 140 millimeter round frame in the front as intake from Noctua, whereas the D30, the front is completely closed off. And uh, that's the primary reason I switched to this one and also switch from micro ADX to ADX so that essentially this case has uh, 10 liters of extra air to play with. Uh, this cooler is also about over um, 200 grams lighter compared to the Noctua. It's also smaller so, but um, the performance as you'll be able to see on this thing is actually comparable to the two and a half time cost um, not to a d15 here is the inside look you can see this is the not to a r series fan 140 millimeters um i kind of had to uh, uh, push it just a little because it's uh, if you can see it's hitting those front panel IO connectors um, these are all arctic fans this is the 120 millimeter bionics and the two at the bottom as intake two at the top as exhaust uh, those are the P14s and uh, here is the D30 with the Noctua. Those are not 140 millimeters, those are uh, 120 millimeter. Um, be quiet, this is not 120 millimeters. So these three are intake, those two are exhaust. No power supply shroud was provided on this one. No, uh, I'm not good with cable management at all, but uh, this is what we have. That's the, on the left is the D30, on the right is the D41. Um, so let's do a benchmark using Intel Extreme Tuning Utility uh, for the Core i7. 13700K in the Johnsbo D30 case running with the Noctua D15 cooler and a Relic Gear contact frame. So, hardware monitor package temperature minimum was 31 degrees, which is not bad at all. Let's start the benchmark. Ninety-six, ninety-seven. It's pretty poor, actually. Maximum temperature reached was ninety degrees centigrade, and the maximum power um, it drew was three hundred and five watts. This is what the John's bow D thirty versus D forty one looks like, side by side. Now I'm going to run the benchmark using the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility on the Core i7-13700K machine that's in the Johnsbo D41 case, running with a Thermal Ride Phantom P14 
Spirit 120SC cooler and no contact frames. Additionally, this case is also um, sporting a Arc A380 uh, GPU. So minimum temperature here is 30 degrees centigrade, uh, which is surprising given this is running a smaller cooler and also with the GPU and no contact frame. Let's start the benchmark. So the score is actually higher on this one. The maximum temperature reached was 84 degrees. Power consumption is actually less on this one. So probably that corresponds with the lower temperature, 212 watts. I don't have any undervolting or anything like that. It's just the CPU cooler type is set as tar cooler which should set the power limit to 288 watts in both instances. It is not a scientific comparison. However, I think um, Noctua is not as cool as it used to be, especially given what thermal rate is giving us at uh, less than half the cost of Noctua coolers.